live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier covering day one of Dell Boomi World 2019. We're in DC this year, we're not in Vegas, pretty cool. Big news with FedRAMP and Boomi. John and I are very pleased to welcome Slalom guests, a couple of them. Slalom is both a partner and a customer. Please welcome Michelle Yee, Practice Area Lead and Founder, Slalom Innovation for Good. Michelle, great to have you. Thank you so much, excited to be here. And we have Shane Fisher, Solution Principal, Business Applications and Integration. Shane, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate being here. So the, the Boomi World yesterday I know kicked off for partners with Partner Summit. Today kicking off for customers and everybody else with a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. But one of the things that Boomi talks about that Solemn is involved in both is their 9,000 plus customers, which obviously you guys have a big hand in, and 580 partners of which you guys are, winning a number of partner awards over the last few years. Shane, we're going to start with you and then we're going to get to the innovation for yep. good, Michelle, with you. Tell us about, so you guys have some really outstanding use cases of where you're helping organizations implement Boomi. Tell us about a little bit about the business overall and then we'll go into some of those use cases. Absolutely. Um, so we are uh, part of a group within Slalom that really kind of focuses on uh, business process automation, integration, and things like that. And uh, so we've had just the unique privilege of being able to help uh, a number of life sciences customers uh, in particular. Um, a couple that I'm super excited about are Sight Life and Juno Therapeutics. Um, you know, both obviously with great missions. Um, you know, Juno Therapeutics, their, their, their mission and objective is to cure all, all ki kinds of uh, lymphomas. Um, and, you know, obviously that, that's a great mission, you know, that, that, you know, just really makes you excited to go to work every day, you know, to, to, to be able to support that. So talk to us about, so I believe it's an immunotherapy company. Yes. Talk to us about what was their IT environment like? Because, you know, on the one end, they're, they're processing all this data, patient data, wanting to probably get patients into clinical trials to evaluate new potential therapeutics. Talk to us about their IT environment. I imagine disparate systems, things not connected. Give us that before picture and why Slalom went in with Boomi. Absolutely. Um, so as you can imagine with any sort of startup, you know, even in like the life sciences space, um, you know, you start fairly immature. Um, you know, you don't have uh, a lot of systems, there's a lot of manual processes, um, you know, a lot of paperwork based processes, um, you know, tracking patients, you know, manually, um, or using bespoke, uh, you know, like to SQL databases and things like that, right? Um, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's that necessary sort of bootstrapping that, that a lot of, you know, very early companies do, but then you get, you know, you reach a certain level where it's like, okay, we've got to grow up a little bit. And so what kind of what started our journey with Juno you know, is that uh, they selected Salesforce as kind of that, that center to sort of uh, collect patient data uh, and be sort of that, um, you know, that first touch point, you know, when we first kind of, uh, you know, interact with the patient um, and are able to kind of track them through their life cycle and, and you give them the best service possible. Um, and obviously once you have Salesforce embedded in, into your, your infrastructure, now I need to integrate that, right? And so um, that was kind of where Slalom uh, became involved um, and um, went through a product selection. Um, Boomi came out, um, the, the clear winner, um, you know, not surprisingly. Um, and yeah, and we, we stood that up for them, uh, you know, and, and started sort of connecting, you know, Salesforce to some of their other, you know, systems and automated. What were some of the reasons why Boomi was uh, the winner? Was there certain categories you had focused on? Was it uh, something specific around what they had? What was the use case that made them stand out? So I, I think uh, speed of delivery and, and just ease of use are kind of the, the, the two main things that really stood out. Um, you know, uh, particularly in, this, in the Salesforce uh, realm, I mean, Boomi just integrates so naturally and so easily with Salesforce. I mean, it's, it, it's as easy as, as, as could be, right? Um, and so that was just a natural use case. Um, and then just the speed of delivery, you know, being able to, to you know, crank through these integrations. Um, I, we heard a gentleman uh, during the keynote talk about Man, the integrations used to take like four months to deliver, and and you think about it now, it's like that is silly, but it's true. That's 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 the world we came from, and so to have a platform that just makes it so much easier, so much snappier, particularly in a, in a uh, in a space where it's so important, like what the end goal is, 
uh, so get that patient care and, and you know and get them the best medicine and stuff like that. So yeah, when, and it's such a, a story that everybody on Earth has been touched by. So Michelle, talk to us about Juno Therapeutics as a great example of what you're doing with with. Um, the program Tech for Good, Innovation for Good, but also give us yeah. a little bit of your interesting backstory on, you had a personal connection to this. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the Solemn Innovation for Good team is only about three months old, so it's a pretty new capability. And what it really stems from is we're an extremely purpose-driven company. I think that's also one reason why we partner so well with Boomi, um, is because we share a lot of that passion together and we're trying to make the world a better place. Um, so, you know, one thing that we try to do is say, hey, major not-for-profit, whoever you are, we understand that you have the same challenges all of our other commercial clients do. So Juno Therapeutics is a great example of, I have information everywhere, how do I get this under control and get value out of that? And that's why this partnership makes so much sense. Um, and so we bring to the not-for-profits our expertise in technology, but then also our connections and partners like Boomi to the table to say, all right, what could we be doing to accelerate this person's mission or this organization's mission and do that you know, using our strengths? Um, and so another client of ours, for example, is American Cancer Society and very well tied to um, Juno Therapeutics because actually immunotherapy is a huge opportunity um, for newer treatments that are less invasive and damaging than chemotherapy. Um, and so my own personal story is, of course, uh, I have a history of uh, breast cancer in my own family. Um, and again, like you said, we've all been impacted by cancer. So helping clients like this through our technology is exactly what we should be doing. You yeah. know, one of the things that's interesting is uh, there's a renaissance of tech for good startups. Yeah. And you know, we started reporting on this a couple years ago uh, when we were in DC with Amazon. We saw that with cloud computing and the life cycle changes of delivery and integration, that you can get off the ground with very little capital and you could also rent, you don't have to spend all your grant money. So there's a real renaissance in entrepreneurial thinking in this area, which is now kind of spawning social investing, social impact, mm -hmm. but actually businesses are getting to profitability. So what's, this kind of speaks to the boomy ethos. I want to get your opinion on this. You guys are close to all this. Is that true? Do you believe that? What do you see? What's your thoughts on this wave of tech for good? I won't say philanthropy because people are building real apps and there's real value being created. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, so I can kick us off. Um, yeah, I think exactly as Shane was saying, our ability, so if we can reduce time for integration, let's say to two months, three months, I don't know, for something simple as a POC even, um, the speed at which we're changing the landscape is incredible. Um, and as an example, so we did some work with breast cancer images and using AI machine learning in the cloud. Um, and so we were actually able to reduce the time it takes to do that analysis from three years into uh, a couple of hours in the span of three months. Wow. So when I think about like, okay, like, it's not like this massive, okay, first we're going to do this three-year integration plan, <laughs> then when we're done with the three-year integration plan, oh, on, we, now we can unlock AI and machine learning. Right. It makes so much yeah, sense Yeah, and who's us. paying for that, right? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, you know, all the money that the not-for-profits yeah. have, right? So, um, you know, I, when I look at that, I'm like, it makes complete sense that we should be capitalizing on this and transform that whole industry. Shane, Renaissance, a, your thoughts, you, what did you, what's your opinion? I, yeah, absolutely, so um, I was just talking to a gentleman last night um, uh, from a, a retail company who, again, you know, very similar story, has launched his own uh, private foundation um, and is using technology to do it. Yeah, um, making an impact. It, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> um, and, and there's, so, there's so many companies out there that are, that are doing this. Um, you know, it's, uh, what do they call it, uh, responsible uh, capitalism, you know, something like that. Um, and, and yeah, I think the technology is sort of enabling, uh, you know, more of that sort of behavior. If you think of it uh, from a, you know, a classic pace layering standpoint, right, it's the, um, you know, where do you want to spend your investment dollars? Do you want to spend that on in infrastructure or do you want to spend that on the things that matter? And I think, you know, making the infrastructure and making these applications so much easier to work with is just unlocking all the rest of the, you know, the, the potential for, for, you know, just having a, an impactful. So impact, impact is a commercial impact for profit. People do that, that's what businesses do. Yeah. The workloads are workloads, the impact is impact, depending upon what yep. you're trying to do. This is the innovation that we're seeing. 
Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things too that, that Chris McNabb talked about this morning, that's even more critical when we're talking about immunotherapy, American Cancer Society, and, and organizations like that is shortening that time to value. John and I were talking about that in our open. And when you're, we're talking about literally life and death situations, any element within an organization, the technology set where you can save even a couple of clicks for a workflow, yep. there's a snowball effect there because as anybody knows, your family knows, we've all been touched by cancer, there isn't time. You're racing it right. against a clock. Yes. So that time to value in an, an example like this really speaks volumes about those outcomes that John was talking about. And I, I mean, I'd love to get your thoughts, Shane, on um, I feel like as the tools are evolving and becoming even easier and easier to use, we can democratize those insights faster and enable more and more types of people to leverage these technologies. Um, so I yeah. don't know if you're seeing the same. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that that sort of that that time to value, I was kind of I was thinking about the site life use case as you were kind of talking about that, right? And, and this is literally where um, you know site life's mission is about um, matching um, eye donors to people that that need them, right? Um, and you know, tragically, you know, people that lose their lives, but being able to harvest the, you know, the, those valuable you know, eyes so that somebody can see um, every second counts in, in, that, in that overall life cycle. And so if you can reduce that, which is what SiteLife did, reduce that life cycle from like a 24 hour cycle down to hours, um, you know, it's, it's impactful. I mean, that, that just has huge impact. And you're also helping, they have, SiteLife has a goal, I was looking at my notes here, of ending corneal blindness by 2040. So sh any element that they can possibly shorten in that yep. entire organization is essential for them to achieve that goal. And I also was reading that the success rate um, of corneal transplants is very high, yet the majority of those folks that need it are in areas that are low income, not yep. as accessible. How can Slalom help site? Um, site life be able to achieve that goal of ending corneal blindness in that time? Like how is Boomi going to be a facilitator of that shortened time to value? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, from my standpoint, I, Michelle, f feel free to, to jump in as well, but um, it's, uh, it's about kind of exactly what you said, right? It's like finding those opportunities to reduce time. Um, and the other thing, particularly in life sciences, right, is you know, quality is a big, big deal. Um, you know, and making sure you're matching, you know, the right patient to the, you know, blood types, um, matching blood to blood in the in the the Juno use case. We call that the vein to vein process, where they actually take the patient's blood, ship it to a manufacturing site, use their own blood, and their their you know, their own you know immune system basically to manufacture a drug and then reinject that into the patient. Imagine if you mess that up somehow. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a big deal. So, <laughs> so let me help give them that that view, because we talk about, John and I, at, at every CUBE event that the CUBE covers, which is a lot, data is always one of the number one yes. topics of conversation, and we think, well, it's the new blood, it's the new oil, it is, if an organization actually has access and visibility to it, and if the applications like Salesforce, ERP, blood bank applications, for example, have the ability to leverage a single source mm -hmm. of that data that's governed, that they can trust. How does yep. Boomi facilitate that vein to vein process, for example? I'm just wondering, if, is there, from a master data hub perspective, is that one of the elements in there that's able to help the, those on the other end be sure that the data that they're matching is indeed correct? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so right now, um, we, we haven't explored MDH yet uh, at, at Juno, um, but I think that's one of those things that may be coming at some point in the future. Um, we call it uh, chain of identity, right? Is ensuring that the blood that you took from the patient is the same blood that comes back, essentially, like tracking that through the entire life cycle. Um, and right now, you know, we're using the Boomi platform, we're using Boomi integration to accomplish that. Um, you know, we log sort of, you know, patient identifying information all the way through the chain, but we also redact it when we log because obviously there's GDPR and there's all these other, you know, regulations around that. Um, and so there, there's a Again, in life sciences, there's a very interesting balance you have to walk. You know, there's regulations you have to follow and things like that. I'd love to get one last question in for the people watching that are maybe changing careers or doing something entrepreneurial in social impact. Your advice to them, because people can see value, they see how path to get there, funding requirements are lower, a lot more people saying, hey, I'm not just doing good, I am actually can make this as a living. 
a lifestyle choice, or whatever reason, business reason. What's your guys' advice to folks thinking about making the change? Best practices, lessons learned, scar tissue, anything you could share. <laughs> <Ooh, ooh. laughs> There's there definitely scar tissue. I the four months. Uh, yeah. oh. Four months, of, uh, four years, the four months, In the, the four basement, hours. You know. Hardcore. <laughs> How do you get this up and running quick? What's the yeah, best practice? I, I'll let Mich Michelle start on this one. Um, oh boy, yeah. okay. Um, no, I, I do have some advice. You know, I, I don't think it's necessarily an easy path to do this. However, I think it's much more feasible now to do it, um, especially with the speed of technology. And what I would say is, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a black and white, you know, situation where it's, I either do social good or I drive revenue. And I think at Slalom anyway, and with many of these other companies, we have found operating models that support both. And I think if you maintain your passion, but also your business mind and the technology sense and combine those, I, I think that's the way to go. Shane, technical thoughts, standing up stuff's cloud, booming. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a very wide and deep world out there. Um, but the thing that's so awesome, um, you know, I, I, I tell um, you know, my directs this all the time, um, it, the opportunity to teach yourself things is, is like at no other time, you know, in our world. Uh, it, all the information is there. Um, yeah, it, starting with with Boomi itself. I mean, Boomiverse. You know, you can go teach yourself whatever you need to know. Um, so I, I'd say, you know, follow your passions and and you know, be a be a fearless learner uh, because awesome. the opportunities are there. Great insight. I thank like you. that, be a fearless learner. Well, Shane, Michelle, thank you so much for sharing what you guys are doing at Slalom, and we look forward to hearing continued successes. Absolutely, thank you so much. thanks for Appreciate having us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. For Shane and Michelle, and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 2019. Thanks for watching.